glad to be here this evening. If you all appreciate the invitation to be here. Again, another great lectureship looks like dealing with the book of John. Love the book of John, right? And I appreciate Brother Robert and the thoughts he brought out in the introduction. I'm certainly uh, glad Robert's able to step in and, and fill the, that uh, hole. Uh, truly, I'm sorry that Don could not be here. I know he uh, would rather be here than what he didn't with cancer in his uh, bladder. So uh, continue to pray for Don. Appreciate him. You know, I said last year when I was here, he'd be gone. Now he is. <laughs> Didn't think he'd be so soon, though. But he retired. His wife got a job down in Arkansas, and they decided to go ahead and make that move. I know he's enjoying that somewhat, but dealing with cancer makes it difficult. As Robert pointed out, we need to be people of Acts 17.11, don't we? Like the Bereans. <coughs> Every person I study with, that's what I try to embed in their minds. We're going to study the Bible. We need to be like the Bereans. Search the scriptures daily. Whether those things were so. Don't believe me or anyone else. Believe the Bible. Read it for yourself. Check it out for yourself. As Robert pointed out, if the Apostle Paul was checked out, uh, no doubt that each one of us should be checked out when we're teaching and preaching the Word of God. Very important. Book of John, well, my uh, section is John chapter 1, 1 through 18. Uh, we will not be reading that, all of it. We'll be referring to certain sections of it for the various points made. But if you haven't read that, uh, you need to read that. The whole book, right, Robert pointed out, is about the deity of Christ. John tells us, uh, you know, people say, don't tell me the end of the movie. Don't tell me how the book turns out. Well, you got to know how the book turns out, and John tells us the end of it, as our point out. He tells us what his book's all about. These things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Why'd you write, John? That. Why did the Holy Spirit write down these things to you? That. To show the reader. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Christ, the Messiah. The Son of the living God. God. To make a claim to be a son of a God was to be claimed equal to God. During that day and time. As we'll see in a minute. The Jews understood that. So Jesus claimed to be that. So the whole book is about Jesus' deity. Deity. What's that word mean? Here it is. It means the character or nature of the supreme being. Nature. Does, does Jesus possess that nature? Does Jesus possess that character of a supreme being? You know, there are those in the religious world who believe that Jesus was a prophet. But that's all he was. Just a prophet. There are those who believe that Jesus uh, is a created angel. He's just another angel among angels. There are those who believe that Jesus is a God. Not the God, but a little God. Just a God among gods. The New World Translation says that in there. John chapter 1, verse 1. A God. Think about that. A God. That kind of demeans that kind of lowers the expectation of Jesus being just a God. So there are these various ideas in the religious world, and they've been around for a long time, trying to deny in one way or another that Jesus is God himself. Jesus was not only a man on planet Earth, he was God too. He was the God-man. So yes, we will see that he possesses the nature, the character of a supreme being. Well, that's who he was. That's who he is. So let's break this down. We're going to look at the pre-existence of Jesus, uh, the creation of Jesus, that is, his showing his, he is God because of his creation, and 
because he can give life. And he is light. He is God. All from chapter John 1, 1 through 4, we're going to cover. And some other verses down through there. Mainly be 1 to 1 through 4. So, does Jesus fit the character of, or nature of, a supreme being, deity? You know, God really is not who he is, it's what he is. The word God. God expresses what is he? He's God. He's deity. Theos in the New Testament. Deity. Supreme being. Well, did Jesus fit that? John 1, 1 and 2. Robert alluded to it. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Someone said three times in that verse, the apostle employs the imperfect tense verb in, rendered was, to denote the timeless existence. Hear that? Timeless existence of the sacred person Known as the Word. Well, who is the Word? Well, verse 14 tells us. And the Word became flesh. Think about that, brother. This being, with John, the Holy Spirit through John, is called the Word. Said that thing called the Word, which is God, became flesh. And dwelt among us. We are the among us. Human beings. Mankind. And we beheld his glory. Whose glory? The thing called the word. We beheld his glory. Think about that. That's what John. From that point forward. In the book. That's what the Holy Spirit through John is going to show us. His glory. There are seven. Now we're not going to deal with them. But there are seven miracles in the book of John. You all know that. Seven miracles. John gives us seven. You ever wonder why seven? Well, we know why seven. What's he doing? He's showing us the glory of this thing called the Word. He beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So John shows us that person. And that person he shows us is deity, is a supreme being, is the supreme being. John, first John, let's go to First John. First John chapter one. This thing, this this person called the Word of God. Think about this for a minute. You know, was Jesus was, was how do we think? You know, <laughs> to be honest, brother, it's difficult to wrap our minds around this this being called God, isn't it? The finite trying to understand the infinite. But thank you, we have the word of God that we can see something what of it, understand something what of it. But this, this being called the word, think about it. We know this being because of what was revealed in the New Testament as Jesus. But in the beginning, was he known as Jesus? He was known as the Word. The Logos. Which is, it was another thing to think about that, that word being the Logos. That's, that's just difficult to wrap your mind around. But 1 John 1 ex explains this a little more. Look at 1 John chapter 1, begin verse 1. That which was from the beginning. Well, that's what John begins his book out with. In the beginning. Now, we're not to understand that that's where he started. We understand he was already there in the beginning. He already existed in the beginning. Some would say, well, he started there. No, he's telling us he already was already there. Which we have heard. Notice how, how John details this, this thing. We have heard... We have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled. Notice all the sensory things he, he throws out there at us. Right? Hearing, seeing, and touching. 
He calls it of the word of life. Well, who's he talking about? Well, we know that person as Jesus. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit through John calls him the word of life. Even when he writes this letter in 1 John, he still referred to Notice that John 1.1 1, 1 says in the beginning he was the Word, and John said he's still the Word. He was in the Word at the beginning, and he's still the Word. Catch that? He was the Word in the beginning, and he's still the Word. The Word of Life. Now think about that. That's going to be our third point. He's referred to as the Word of Life. That life describes some of his characteristics of him being deity, of him being God. For the life was manifested or made known. What life? This person we know as Jesus. That's John 1, 14. The Word became flesh. And we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father. Did you catch that? Sometimes you don't catch that. He's talking about Jesus here. Okay? And he says this was eternal life. That eternal life was with the Father which he's referring to as the Word. You see, he's talking about deity. Deity is being described. The Theos, God, was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, and we also may have fellowship with us. Truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. The Father and the Son are connected, aren't they? Because they're deity. They're both theos. Revelation 19, 13. He's referred to the same idea here. And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood. Notice this. And his name is called, here it is, the Word of God. That's in beginning in John. It's in 1 John in Revelation. And, and go, guess who wrote all three of those? John wants us to get that this person is God. This person called Jesus, who became flesh. He's called the Word of God, the Law of God. So why do we understand these verses? Well, Christ is deity. His preexistence declares his deity. He existed. God existed before the world was. Sometimes we get the question, well, what was before the beginning? God? You, you, you're sitting in a Bible class or like out of camp sometimes with all the kids, you'll ask questions, they'll say, God, everyone, God, they think the answer is God every time, you know. Well, in this case, it is. What was before the beginning? God was. God was before in the beginning. His preexistence proves that he is deity. That shows his nature of a supreme being. That's the word for deity. Notice John chapter 8. I'm sure some of the speakers will deal with this somewhere along the line. I'm going to throw in here what I'm talking about. John chapter 8, begin verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. I like this part right here and saw it. Now, isn't that a kicker, brother? Jesus told those people, you know, Abraham was jumping up and down to want to see my day. And they would say, well, he didn't see it. And Jesus said, yeah, he did. That's what Jesus just said. And he saw it. Of course, we know he saw it through the eye of faith, didn't he? And was glad. Then said the Jews, now, here, now here's the kicker, listen to it. Then said the Jews, thou art not 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Brother, what he just said for them, those people, they, they were told, he, they thought, this, this is, you're talking an impossible. In order for you, Jesus, to have seen Abraham, you had to pre-exist him. He said, right. Now you're getting the point. 
They didn't like that point, did they? Because he made himself to be God when he did that, brother. He made himself to be God. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, here it is, before Abraham was, I am. Now, they didn't like what he just said. But you hear what he just said? You see what he declared? He said, I existed before Abraham. And they're saying, if that's in Paul, you're 50 years old. That means you had it right. They were connecting the dots, and they didn't like the dots of being connected. His pre-existence. You know, in Exodus chapter 3, we had a being speak from a burning bush called what? Moses said, whom shall I send, send me? And the being said, tell them the I am. You tell them the I am sent you. Yes, he was speaking from that bush. We say, God, right? Here's the person right here. Before Abraham was, I am. Take some time, look up that phrase you said there, connect that with Exodus 3, the I am. Both those ideas mean the self-existing one. The eternal one. Brother, that's powerful. Now here's the deal. They got it. They didn't like it, but they got it. True nowadays. That's seeable, but people don't like it. Because Jesus made himself out to be a supreme being. Theos. God. Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. Keep track of the clock here. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathiah, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is the ruler in Israel. Who is this? Who is this he coming? Who is this person whose goings forth have been from old? How old, Micah? From everlasting. Is that old or what? What's Micah prophesying about? This person's going to be born in Bethlehem already, already exists. He already exists. He's not going to begin in Bethlehem. He's not going to start existing there. He's already been going. He's already been existing. So the pre-existent, John shows us the pre-existent pre Jesus shows his deity. He's God. He's Theos. 2 John chapter 1, verse 3. Uh, John mentioned the creation. All things were made by him. Well, who's the him? The same word called the word. This word created all things. Now, how much is all things? Well, it means that, all things. What's left out? Nothing, all things. Except himself. Himself is not in the all things, brother. He created all things. And without him was not anything made that was made. Well, the same idea dropped down the first ten. That same idea. His creation shows us his deity. He's not the created being. He is the creator. That's the point. Get this. There are some people, as, as amazing as you, things you can find out there in people's minds, there are some people who believe that Jesus is the brother of the devil. I'm thinking, what? The, uh, a brother of the devil, that they were equal at one time. You got to question the person's sanity, don't you? You think so? Jesus, a brother of Satan. That one time, they think, that's false. Satan is a created being. Jesus is not. Jesus created him. Not as the devil, of course, as an angelic being. 
All things means exactly that. Does that include an angels? Well, Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 and 17 says, yes, it does. For by him, same phrase in John 1, 3, by the way. By, for by him are all things created. Same thing as John 1, John 1, 10. For by him are all things created. Where, John? Uh, in heaven, earth, visible, invisible, thrones, dominions, principalities. Name it! Right? Name it! If it exists, he created it. Do you get that? That's what I get. In heaven and in earth, that, that was it covered. Everything and everywhere. All things were created by him and uh, uh, for him. I like that. That's, to me, that's the best part. For him. Why do these things exist for him? That's just something of our purpose, doesn't it? For him. To serve him. All things are to serve him. You ever think about when, when, when God was on earth in Jesus, the how he could, the, how he could the, the calm a storm? How he could... What always amazed me about the Son of God is how he could walk on water. You know, Robert mentioned going fishing with, with uh, Johnny one time. We're out here uh, down at uh, Truman Lake. And uh, it's me, Johnny, and another feller. And Johnny, he's back, you know, sitting there like that. He, he, he got a lure hung up over in a tree, okay? And uh, he's jerking, jerking. He said, I'm going to get that lure out. That's my favorite lure. So we back in this, in this brush and he, he leaned way back on his chair. I won't get that lure and snap that, that, that chair. That, it broke down he, out the, almost out the back. He's hanging out the back of the boat here, head dangling in the water. His cell phone came out, went down into the lake. I'm thinking, right now you'd love to walk on the water, wouldn't you? <laughs> Jesus did, didn't he? You ever think about that? Jesus knew the potential strength of water. Huh? Why? Because everything serves him. Guys, he was showing his deity. For him, it says, for he is before all things. And by him all things consist. So his creation proves that he is God. Third, this is John 1, 4. John says, in him, well, who's the in him? Still the person called the Word. We're still talking about the Word that was in the beginning. In him was life. Notice that. In him was life. That's the uh, John, verse John 1 3. You're going to see he's called the word of life. In fact, he's the only being referred to as life. And having this type of power in him, life is in him. Well, that's God. God has life. He's the giver and sustainer of life. Who God is. Well, this person in him, this Christ, was life, and the life was the light of men. Him having that ability. Prove that he is God. Jesus is the source of life. <laughs> name, the, name the type of life. Physical, spiritual, eternal. He's the source of all of them. Without him, we know none of it would exist. Without God, it would exist. There can be no life or life without God. So Jesus must be God because he's is it. He is the light. In fact, John says, for John the Baptist, John wasn't the light, but wasn't that light. They thought he was. But John said, no, I'm, no, I'm not. But one is coming who is. He was talking about the Christ. Mark chapter 2, I want to show you something here. I'll read a little lengthy reading here in, John chapter, in Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, begin at verse 1. <clears throat> And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. 
Straightway many were gathered together, in so much there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. No, is it? They bring him four, four guys are packing this one man. But this man not able to get walk. And they could not come nigh unto him for the press. So they couldn't get in the door. Too many people standing around. But they can't get in the door. What do they do? They uncover the roof where he was. So they on top of the flat roofs, they're on top tearing it up. Feel sorry for the guy owned the house. How about you? He has to look, he's got to repair that roof. So these four guys, get the point, these four guys, bearing this guy who can't walk, they're turning, he's not doing none of this, these four guys are. Tearing this roof up, trying to get him down to Jesus when they had broken it up. Think about that. They had to tear a big enough hole to get him down into this room where Jesus is, this whole house full of people. They let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. So can you see in your mind's eye? These lornest dude down, stretched out here, right there. Here Jesus. Well, I'd imagine Jesus probably, probably saw stuff coming down from the ceiling, don't you? He's probably thinking, well, no, what, what? No, he already knew what was going on. But watch it now. When Jesus, verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith. Who's faith? Four guys. These four guys who turned the roof up, right? It's all their faith. What was their faith? Turn this roof up. Their faith was, was demonstrated. Watch this now. Now here's going to be the kicker for all these people. Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Oh, that's going to rape against the grain of some of these guys in the house. Did you hear what Jesus just did to that man? He said, your sins are forgiven. The sick of palsy, who they let down there. Those guys are still up on the roof. They let this guy down. Jesus looking now at the sick of palsy. He said, you're good to go. You're forgiven. But there were certain scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Now why would they say that? Who can forgive sin but God only? They can say that what Jesus just said to that man. See, they understood. They connected the dots, what Jesus just did. Do you know what Jesus claimed when he did that? Did we get that? You know what Jesus claimed when he said to that man? Saying that to that man claimed him to be someone. They reasoned correctly. They were right. They didn't like what they were seeing or hearing. But they knew what Jesus was claiming and doing it. Verse 8. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned with themselves, he said to them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? I like this best of all. Whether it be easier to say the sick of palsy, thy sins are forgiven thee, or rise and take up thy bed and walk. Don't you love that? Jesus said, I can do either. And the result will be the same when I say it. Now, they didn't like it, what they were hearing. But you hear what Jesus is claiming when he does stuff like that? He's claiming to be God. He is claiming to be the supreme being. He is claiming to be Theos. They know it. They don't like it. They know it. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of palsy, I have said thee, rise and take up thy bed, go thy way in thine house. He said, I can do it, I'll do it this way. The results will be the same. Because the power there is authority. Because I have authority to do either one, and the results will be the same. 
verse 12 says, Immediately he arose, took up the bed, went forth before them all, and so much that they were all amazed. Watch this now. Glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. No, they had not, because they never dealt with deity in the flesh. Guys, there had been a lot of people before Jesus who claimed to be Jesus. There had been imposters before who claimed to be the Messiah. Did they match what Jesus was doing? No, they had never seen nothing like that. No, because they never dealt with the real deal. They never dealt with the authentic one. Jesus claimed to be and was God in the flesh. His power of life and power of life showed him that. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, begin verse 17. We're running out of time. John 5, verse 17. But Jesus answered them, My Father has been working until now, and I have been working. Do you, do you, do you realize what Jesus claimed there? They knew why he just said <laughs> See, these guys got the dots. They didn't like it. Watch this. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. And he did. That's what he just did. Was he equal with God? Yes. He was God in the flesh. I think he's called the Emmanuel, Matthew chapter 1. God with us. I think so. John chapter 1, verse 18, the last verse there in our text. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. What's he saying there? Well, connect that with John chapter 14. <clears throat> right down outside John 1, 18, John 14, begin verse, verse 8, and connect the dots. Philip says unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it suffices us, Jesus said unto him. Uh, to, to, to put it in my own words, uh, have you closed your eyes to what you've been seeing? He says, have I been so long? I'm with you, and you, yet hast thou not known me? What's he claiming? Philip, tell me, Philip, he that has seen me has seen the Father. Not that he is the Father, but he is like the Father. He's equal to the Father. He's God. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Man, you've been seeing him all along. That's why I'm down here. I'm representing him. Show us the Father. Believest thou that I am in the Father? And the Father in me? No, that they didn't get that. The words that I speak, un, speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, the Father in me, or else believe me. For the very work's sake. What you saying? Man, don't you, the things I'm doing proves who I claim to be. What I'm doing, in other words, if you don't believe what I'm saying, look what I'm doing. That backs up what I'm saying. Isn't that the purpose of miracles in the first century? To back up the speaker. To back up the writer. To prove that what they said or wrote was from God. And that's what Jesus is saying here, man. If you don't believe me, look at what I'm doing. What I, what, that proves the very fact that I am claiming what I'm claiming to be. I'm not an imposter. I'm not a fake. I know these shysters that came through here. Revelation chapter 1. Seven and eight, behold, he cometh the clouds. Who's the he? Oh, we know who the he is. The one we're talking about. Every eye shall see him, and they, and, and they also experienced him. All kinds of the earth shall wail because of him. 
Even so, amen, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Who's that talking about? Who's that? God. Yeah, that's right. God. Who's coming back? God is. Jesus is. God is returning one of these days. Why? To take home his kingdom. Take home his church. And take it to heaven. So, end it like this. Does this really matter at all? There were some saying, well, it doesn't matter, David. It don't really matter. All, you all seem to be talking about it really don't matter. As long as you believe Jesus, just Jesus, you're all right. God, God all right. I'll show you how it matters. John chapter 8, verse 24. I say therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe in not that I am. Connect the I am to the other I am we talked about. Before Abraham was, he said, I am. Yeah, it matters. He said, it matters so much you don't believe it, you're going to die in your sins. That's how important this stuff is. No, well, it's highly important. You shall die in your sins. When you believe I am, ye shall die in your sins. Well, we know what happens if we die in our sins. Well, we're lost. So, yeah, this stuff is really important stuff. And believing that Jesus is the Son of God. God himself. God in the flesh. The God-man. So there are those who believe that Jesus is just a prophet. Well, prophets can't save. There are those who believe Jesus is just another angel. Angels can't save. There are those who believe that Jesus is just another man. A man can't save, but God can. And that's who Jesus is. God. Luke 19, 10. The Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. That's what God is all about. And we know that's what we should be about. He holds the power of eternal life in his hand. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8 and 9 said, Though he were a son, yet he learned no obedience by the things which he suffered. Now watch this now. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. Notice that. You, you think about that? He became the author of the eternal salvation. Now watch this last part. Unto all them that obey him. You know, when I teach people, I get around to finally saying, Have you obeyed the gospel? I can stay, we're, my wife and I stayed a couple right now on Friday nights, by the way, so well, sorry about that. But uh, right now we're staying the idea of you need to obey the gospel. Because they believe the sinner's prayer. You heard that the sinner's prayer. You need to obey the gospel. That's, that's God's plan. Obey the gospel. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7, 8, and 9. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel. That's God's plan. Obey the gospel. And those initial steps, of course, is believing in Jesus Christ, Son of God. John chapter 8, verse 24. Believe to repent of our sins, Acts 7, 8, God commands all men everywhere now. I love it, don't you? Not a soul left out playing earth, no matter where they live. Some say, what about the person in dark Africa? He's, he, he's in there. God commands all men everywhere to repent. Change our minds. Change our will. Change our actions. Turn. If that's Christ is the Son of God, I believe. Acts chapter 8, and what, I use that all the time in teaching people. The man riding along in a chariot, not knowing why he's reading Isaiah 53. What a great account. Philip Meets him and says, well, understand what thou readest? He said, how can I except some man guide me? He invites him up the chair. As they're riding along, the Bible says he preached unto him in Jesus. They came to certain water. And he said, see, here is water. What did him to me to be baptized? I wonder how he reached. You ever wonder, how did he reach that conclusion? Oh, it says he preached unto him in Jesus. But somewhere along the line, as that chair is going along, Philip said, you need to be baptized. You need to obey the gospel. And that included, he understood it, to be baptized. He said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. He said, here it is. I believe 
that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He understood it, didn't he? He understood it so much. Listen to it. When he came out of that water, the Bible says he went on his way rejoicing. He understood it completely. If we can do what he did, we'd be what he was, a Christian. A member of the body of Christ. If we can help you do that, why don't you come away? Standing things going to soften you in the ring. All things are ready.